Hi, Dan Stein, coming to you from FAIR, Federation for American Immigration Reform here in Washington. I want to have an informal conversation today about what we're looking at over the next couple of months. There's a uh, rumor circulating around that a lot of the Democrats, particularly the so-called progressives, as they like to style themselves, uh, would like to try to jam a massive amnesty bill into a budget reconciliation package that's going to be coming up in the Senate between now and the end of the fiscal year. A budget reconciliation is, of course, a procedural process that allows 50 votes to pass, uh, whereas normally it requires a 60-vote uh, vote in order to bring something to a final debate and vote in the Senate. So basically, budget reconciliation is a loophole to try to cram a lot of stuff into. And the objective here, apparently, is to try to pass on a ultra-partisan basis a massive amnesty bill for as many as 10 million illegal aliens. Now, keep in mind that the United States has historically looked at immigration as one of those issues that's dealt with on a bipartisan basis. In the same way, there's an old adage about politics stops at the water's edge. Issues that pertain to international relations, international affairs, this, the U.S. with respect to the rest of the world, you know, we don't have those debates overseas, the politics stays at home. Well, the same principle applies for certain kinds of issues that deal with international affairs, international relations, and certainly immigration policy, which really deals with the question of who we are and who we will be. Very few issues are more amenable to this idea that sovereignty and democracy are at their peak's edge here in the discussions of how Congress decides these issues with the input of the American people. Historically, it has been unimaginable, unthinkable, that Congress would try to pass polarizing and divisive measures like an immigration amnesty through a hyper-partisan process. In fact, if you look back at the history of immigration legislation going all the way back to the turn of the 20th century, at the federal level, you cannot really find the kind of hyper-partisan legislating like what's being contemplated here today in Washington by the Democrats. Now, it's true that there is a more challenging threshold in the Senate in order to pass any kind of legislation. However, we would advise that this is a very unwise course of action for a number of reasons. A massive amnesty is unfair for a number of reasons. One, it rewards lawbreakers. It gives an advantage to people who broke the law and they profit by their illegality. Two, it sends a message to people all over the world that you are a sucker if you comply with U.S. immigration law. If you break the law, come illegally, come over the border, overstay a visa, you're going to get an advantage by having done so. Three, it undermines the idea that the United States is a nation of laws and that fairness apply, that people who play by the rules get treated fairly. Incentivizing law breaking is why we have people running across our borders by the hundreds of thousands every month. Now, why is that happening? Politicians like Joe Biden have been promising amnesty over and over again to people going back decades. We had a bill in 1986 that provided an amnesty in exchange for responsible immigration controls and enforcement moving forward. Many of the same business interests, big agriculture and others, are the same ones who are trying to underwrite a massive amnesty without any kind of compensatory pro-enforcement, pro-control positions moving forward. Historically, any kind of immigration reform bill worthy of the name has some concessions to different sides. Now there may be some kind of adjustment program, but there's also going to be measures for things like E-Verify, reduce future levels of legal immigration, better controls, eliminate chain migration, at least some kind of effort to try to meet in the middle so that both sides feel like, yes, you're going to give some people a break, but you're going to have better border security at the end of the day. Never before in American history has any political party contemplated a mass amnesty program when the borders are completely out of control. We are dealing with a manifest immigration crisis. Sometime about the middle of the Clinton administration in the early mid-1990s, it occurred to me that the federal government really simply had no longer the ability to regulate immigration. There were several reasons for this. One of them is that the numbers coming into the country and using the immigration system had simply become too high to be effectively regulated by the government. They simply had lost control of the process. Backlogs had grown. They were, we were over-promising. We couldn't possibly deliver. It took forever for people to get a hearing. In the early 1980s, 
The advocates on the other side insisted on setting up this quasi-court system. Instead of having government officials approving or denying visa applications and asylum requests and what have you, they continually set up these judicial bureaucracies. Now we have to have deportation hearings before immigration judges. And the immigration court system has turned into a sham and a mockery. It's now got a backlog of millions and millions of cases, no prospect of aliens getting their hearing in a reasonable period of time, delay benefits the illegal alien, they get to come here, they get work documents, they get to have kids here, you as citizens under the 14th Amendment, and they turn around and claim in the media they don't want to go back home. Temporary protected status has become unmanageable. You can't process the people to find them to make them go back home. Removals have essentially collapsed. Under the Biden immigration administration, you have seen a total enforcement collapse entirely in the United States. Immigration is now completely unenforced. The law is a mockery, and the whole thing is a complete mess. It's a catastrophe. Now, against this backdrop, who would be pushing a mass amnesty program at a time when our borders are total chaos? Well, it's not just the left-wing power grabbers who want to consolidate political control for the Democratic Party for the next 50 years, although that's obviously their incentive. Take a look at the donor base. Behind an organization called Forward US, FWD.US, Forward US, type in Board of Directors, Board of Contributors. You can't get it through their website anymore, but you can still find it on Google. And what are you going to find there? Who is the big power interest pushing this nonsense at this time? Well, you know, in addition to the usual foundations, you know, like Soros and the Open Society crowd and, the, uh, and Lorene Powell Jobs and her Atlantic Monthly and all the usual uh, clown show of uh, out-of-tech billionaires, you have these tech oligarchs, okay? This hall of horrors that you see at the funding base of Forward U.S., include principals involved with Google, Microsoft, Netflix, Facebook, um, a bunch of entrepreneurial uh, investment advisors and people like that, people who are just basically detached multimillionaires and billionaires. You can see them on the page who they are and the companies they represent. This is what we're up against. These are people who are simply out of touch with the American people, lack any kind of context for how destabilizing mass immigration has become, how it's created the divisions within our society that have caused us to fray apart as a people, allowing opportunistic politicians to try to use identitarian utopianism to try to create some sort of perfect world by destabilizing our cultural framework and eliminating what remains of our American history and traditions. Environmental preservation ought to be an important aspect of our future for these folks. They claim to care about the environment, but at the same time, they seem to want to adopt policies that maybe enrich them further by lowering the cost of labor and getting people to lock down and use their services. And of course, they have, may have other motivations I'm not aware of, but at the same time, they want to increase our carbon footprint and increase regulation of our individual behavior because of that in order to achieve uh, a reduction in our overall carbon footprint as a nation and try to eliminate climate change. Well, you simply can't get all these things at the same time. And so why would these people be working against their interests in the environmental movement to try to advance a partisan political agenda? Well, the answer is self-interest and ideology. It's a powerful elixir. Tech oligarchs make more money off immigration. They also get the claim that they're, un, that they're you know, sympathetic and liberal-minded and therefore they don't have to worry about being name-called in a world where name-calling is now, of course, very easy and very commonplace. What they don't understand is that trying to pass an immigration amnesty bill of this magnitude through the budget reconciliation process is ultimately far more divisive than any problem it solves. And it's one of the reasons why a democratic administration can never really resolve the nation's immigration crisis. Why you would need to have a Republican administration that proffers something like a limited DACA amnesty in exchange for robust and meaningful enforcement going forward. This is the problem that the left wing doesn't understand in this country. Business would rather have the status quo, illegal immigration, lower cost labor, and no amnesty than to concede important immigration reforms and enforcement that would give the American people a sense that there's control. Now, Biden and the administration have painted themselves into a big political corner. Proof that the president is not really running the show, guy who's been in office as long as he has, must know that his immigration policies and his border crisis are catastrophic politically. 
He's allowed this thing to happen instead of taking steps to give the public assurances that this won't continue indefinitely. Obviously, Biden himself has checked out. He's not engaged in serious policy discussions. I'm not sure he's capable of it at this point. So he's letting the, you know, the foxes run the hen house. They're driving the Democrats off a political cliff with this strategy. It is incredibly divisive, incredibly irresponsible, and incredibly ungoverned, unstatesperson-like to even discuss the possibility, A, of doing this on a partisan basis with not a single Republican vote, and B, doing this at a time when we have a massive immigration crisis going on, which can only incentivize more of it in the future. Unless your objective is total anarchy and total border chaos, which history shows is the road toward ruin for any society, there's no, there's no nation in the history of the world that has successfully survived a complete collapse of its borders. Every single one of them has disappeared from the history books. Time has come for Americans to stand up against hyperpartisanship. We're looking for Joe Manchin, Senator Sinema, and some of the other thoughtful Democrats who care about the integrity of our system to stand up against this kind of tyranny and represent that tech oligarchs, maybe they're nice people, but they don't understand the art of governance. They don't understand that a, co a country has to move forward on the basis of a balanced bipartisan consensus on key issues like national immigration policy. To pass an amnesty bill like this would be a treacherous precedent. It would be transparently self-serving politically for Democrats. It would appear to be the most blatant immigration-related power grab in American history, and it would send this country back to down the path toward civil discourse, disruptive civil discourse. How do I want to put this? It's not a path we want to go down if we want to see unity and, and comity in our country. President Biden said he wanted to govern in a unified fashion. Considering an amnesty bill through budget reconciliation is not a path to move this country forward. It sends the wrong signal at the wrong time. Biden has no mandate for this. He didn't campaign on it. He didn't significantly do anything since he introduced his original bill except set off a tidal wave of an immigration crisis. So everyone who's involved with FAIR, who's involved right now, I encourage you to make your voices known. Tell your senator, no budget reconciliation amnesty provisions, no immigration provisions at all in a budget reconciliation package. This is not appropriate, and it's not good governance, and we all need to oppose it. Thanks so much.